Welcome everyone. Thanks for tuning in. This is the first time I get to say welcome to my workshop. Uh, we've been out here and I think I've done a couple little things, but uh, I'm in the process of putting up OSB, uh, oriented strand board on the walls, and so everything's kind of crammed to the middle. Uh, there's going to be a lot of random shots in this project, so I apologize ahead of time for a, for a messy shot building. It's kind of anxiety inducing and I can't wait to get all the OSB up so I can actually get some shelving in here. But uh, it's a functional workshop. Today's project is a baby gate. So uh, there's a lot of things to consider when you're making a baby gate. If someone asks you to do it, you know, you need to understand that there's a two action closure. There's a maximum spacing of two and three eighths inches between the slats. Um, spacing between the floor and the bottom of the gate has to be two inches, you know, or, or less. And it needs to be around 24 inches tall. 22, I think, is spec. 24 is fine. But uh, a lot of things to consider. There's a lot of baby gates on Pinterest and, and various things I've seen, and most of them are all just crap. And uh, you're opening yourself up for a lawsuit, you know, or worse, an injury of an infant if you don't do this correctly. So take all those baby gates, 99% of them that you've ever seen, and just understand that it's all probably just crap. And if you purchase one, you know, the button when you push down and lift up on to open it, it's just for the safety of the infant, guys. So uh, I'll, I'll, I've got a lot of pictures of baby gates on my phone and uh, just for this project, and all of them are junk. So we're going to build one. I'm going to try to wrap my head around a two-action closer. I think I've got a pretty cool system I want to show you, but that'll be at the end of the video and uh, maybe at the, uh, on the install video. But let's get to work. i got a lot of work to do and a lot of head scratching ahead of me, so I'm going to make this as quick as possible. Uh, first thing to do is to cut my 1 by 4 by 8 number 2 select, into 4 feet sections. Okay, the next step is to uh, take, a, take all these boards to the joiner and assign a straight edge so we can take them to the table saw and rip them uh, accurately. You always want to keep the bow up, the high spot on the edge up when you take it to a joiner. Otherwise, you won't assign a proper edge. It'll just rock around. It'll be hard. It'll take more passes to get it flat. Here we go. <laughs> All right, now that that step's completed, I've set the table saw to two inches, exactly. And we're gonna make sure we put the jointed side against the fence. That's our dedicated, uh, perfect flat side. In the process will create parallel sides of a board that's, that's really consistent and accurate. So measuring each tooth, keep in mind the bigger the curve of your blade, the bigger the offset of the teeth. Just make sure that you measure the closest tooth to the fence. All right, I was able to get through that uh, without a lot of stress, a lot of internal stress in the woods. I'm pretty stress-free. But uh, this is not a tutorial on safety. For all the, the tool shop uh, people that browse these videos and want to want to talk safety and criticize, listen, I, I, I've done this for so long. This is, this is what I do. If I waited for the blade to stop every time I moved the board, I'd never get anything accomplished. And uh, if you see something that you feel is unsafe, well, don't do that. It's just that simple. Uh, this is not a safety tutorial. There's a lot better videos out there than that. This are, these are going to become the perimeter of the baby gate. I have kind of a, a little drawing of the baby gate. It's just basically going to have casters on each end. And it's going to have like a J-hook uh, to keep it stable at the top. And it's going to have a steel runner down the center of the baby gate 
the casters will be inset on each end. Uh, so it's going to be uh, it's going to be really cool. I think I'm use four inch casters. Are probably probably your thing. I think they are uh, casters really nice and they're going to be big and robust and it's going to look cool. Now we have to set it for dados. I'm going to dado. If you picture this board as the top rail, which it, one of these will be the I'm going to pick the best one. I'm going to start dead center, and I'm going to run dados that are a quarter of an inch deep all the way down it. I'm going to end up sandwiching these boards together or two of these boards together, it may not be these exact boards, they'll be sandwiched together with a dado inset and the slats will set inside the dado and these boards will end up flush. So these boards will be glued together and any time that you have a bow, which I do with this fast growth um, fur, any time that you have a bow, I'm just going to put the bows opposite each other and when everything's clamped together, hopefully, as this wood even dries up further, it's only 45% humidity in my shop, uh, or that's what it is, and in your house could be 25 or less, you know, depending on how if you run humidifiers or not. So this fast growth fire has a tendency to move, so that's why I'm doing a laminated gate and not just a straight run board. I feel like I can circumvent some of the issues with warping and twisting. Okay, so unfortunately, I don't have a zero clearance insert uh, for a dado blade. Obviously your dado blades adjust based on the project, but I don't have any kind of thing that's even close. It's just an open hole. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna sacrifice my crosscut sled that I made uh, for this dado. I have, uh, there's gonna be some cross cutting, but it's not super critical. I'm not making a, a fine box and uh, any imperfection of course will just be, will be negligible uh, as far as tear out goes on the backside of the fire. I'm going to have to fill some spots anyway because of the knots and various things. So let's bring the dado up through this and um, establish a zero clearance for this three quarter inch dado. Alright, so uh, after some math and some careful consideration, knowing that the maximum spacing of uh, slats on a baby gate are two and three eighths of an inch. So after working out the width of my slats and taking into consideration um, what will be outside of the dados, because I'm going to take some, I'm going to dado, or a rabbit, I guess it would be the each end of the slats, and so 11, I'm going to end up with three and 11 sixteenths. So 11 divided by 16 is uh, 0.6875. And that's the distance between the, the edges of my dados. So maybe that'll make a little bit more sense later. All right, so ideally, anytime you're uh, cutting dados and you want to keep everything true, you need to cut all of your dados at the exact same time, meaning each board would have been placed together and cut at the same time. And that just ensures, you know, without movement, that ensures that everything will be straight and true. With my setup, after the test cuts were made and I, and I liked them, I could only safely do uh, two boards at a time. And, uh, I, you know, I was really careful, careful to get everything very accurate. So uh, it, it's close, and uh, I don't think any, anything that, that's not exactly perfect will be too minuscule. It'll be, uh, you know, negligible, and it'll be too small to notice when the, when, once the baby gate is finished. But that turned out great. Let's move on to the next step. Okay, so it turned out my slots, my dados, and my boards were a little bit shallow. And I think it had to do with a little bit of a bow at the back end of my sled. It's getting old and it's getting some age on it, so I'm sure it's changing over time. That's okay. Uh, doubling the thickness of the dado, it was 0.224, so 0.448, you know, uh, just shy of a half inch. So we're going to uh, cut the tongues on the slats now, and we're going to cut them down to 0.448. And that'll allow, uh, I was a little bit shy to, you know, probably you know, a couple uh, hundredths of an inch of shy uh, to depth when I was measuring the depth of the dado itself. So uh, it gives us a little bit of room. We don't want to be too thick when we go to join them up, but we'll test as we go. All right, so real quick, I've just clamped a stop for the boards, and I'm just going to, each of these slats will just be butted up against the edge of it and ran through. 
at 20 and a half inches and after everything is capped and trimmed out and allowing for the two inch space between the baby gate and the floor, the total height of the baby gate will be 24 inches. Alright, so continuing on, I just have all of the slats cut uh, to their first dimension. And what I'll do, I'll just, I'm just i going to glue them together. Like I said, they're kind of springy. This fast growth fur um, is kept outdoors in a covered building uh, at my home, you know, whatever what you can call it, the, su the supply store, lumber supply store. So it dries out when it comes indoors and it starts to turn. It always does. Uh, so what I'll do, I'll just try to put the spring. Uh, against each other. If they have bows, I'll just put the bows opposite each other and then when I clamp it, hopefully over time, it'll keep it from changing too bad. But that's that's what you get into when wood has not been, uh, you know, properly acclimated for indoors. It's going to turn, especially this soft growth, fast growth soft wood. But uh, I'm not sure if I was in frame, but you get the gist of this. This is just an even coat of glue and this will just happen anytime I glue something up. You know, you want to, this is so, this wood's so absorbent too, you want to make sure that you get enough. You want to squeeze out. Um, I've had, in the past, I was trying to avoid cleanup, you know, not put enough glue on. And that's a bad idea because um, it can absorb in and you can, your joint can fail. Now this is a baby gate. You know how fast kids grow, so I'm not real... Uh, real concerned with structural integrity to the point where it'll last for eons because this will last far longer than it'll take the baby to grow up and no longer need a need a structure to keep it out of a certain location. So we're going to get into more about expansion and contraction of wood as time goes on. But let me clamp this up now. Okay, as you can tell, I hope this is in frame. I have a nice amount of squeeze out on both sides, and that's what you're looking for. I'm just going to get this cleaned up and prepare it for the next step. Okay, so real quickly, after all of these have been glued up, I did the best I could to smooth the glue flat. And I'm going to take this to the joiner both sides. It's a little bit small for the joiner, but I'm going to be really careful, and I'm going to move this out of the way to give you a better idea you can see what's happening. Now this is a procedure where I recommend that you know know your tools and be very careful. If your thumb slips off of this or if you slip off with one of these paddles, I find that these paddles can actually be more dangerous doing it uh, this way than with the bare hands. But just make sure that you know what's happening and keep your hands away from the cutter. When I get towards the end, I'm going to pull this back and let you see what's happening here. Like I said, this is not necessarily a safe practice, but you know I'm really careful. And if you don't feel comfortable doing something like this, by all means, don't do that. Okay, so bear in mind, anytime you joint a side, then you'd obviously put the jointed side against your table saw fence and then cut the other side on the table saw to maintain perfect parallel sides. But uh, in this case, I'm just going to joint both sides. Any amount that I take it out of parallel will be so negligible it, it won't matter. What I do want to do, though, is remember that I put this side through first, so I'll put the other side through first this time. All right, real quick, let me catch up on what I'm doing. I just have a cross-cut sled set back up with a three-quarter inch wide dado. It's set at a proper height to cut the proper width to slide in here with a snug fit. I have a stop block set up at an inch and seven-eighths long. These boards are two inches long exactly. So I just don't want the bottom of the slat sticking out 
to, to require me to have to sand it or you know to make it'll make a running the cat board uh, board down a little bit more difficult so let's cut all these and we'll come back Okay, so I finished the work on the dados to create the width needed to slide into the slots of the top and bottom slat rails. It's a pretty good fit. Uh, because I took them to the joiner, there's going to be a little bit of a discrepancy in fit. Some are a little bit slightly tighter than others. But see, there's a good fit right there. But, uh, you know, my dado is a, it's a Freud dado, but it leaves a stair step. Um, some of these, um, well, all of them. So I don't really know why it's doing that, but a lot of them do. So anyway, I've got this width worked out, and then now all I have to do is take the depth to 0.448, so 448 thousandths of an inch, not quite a half inch, and we'll do that. And uh, then we'll uh, kind of get a dry fit on the floor and take a better look. I really need a setup table. There we go. That's what we're looking for. All right, so so far I'm really uh, pleased and excited about how this is going together. As you can see, if it's coming through clearly in the video, I left an eighth of an inch of room between the bottom of the tongue of the slats and the bottom of the, uh, the actual baby gate because it's gonna be capped off and trimmed off. You're not gonna see the top edges anyway. I just didn't wanna have to deal with sanding and, 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 or, or planing them off, you know, before I glue up. And uh, it's really going together well. I think it's going to be self-squaring. Everything's really tight. I left just enough. Uh, that's a friction fit, not a tight friction fit, but really good fit. So I think everything will uh, self-square when I go to glue it up. I'm not sure how I'm going to tackle it. I really need a lot more clamps, uh, a lot smaller, you know, more smaller clamps for this type of glue up. More hands would be good too. There's two things uh, that I have to figure out and of course that's going to be the two action closure I think I have an idea for that and I also have to put these casters on the casters let me see is this in frame let me move the camera the casters will go right here give or take that location keeping the baby bed or baby gate two inches off the floor and uh, so I'm just going to have to work out the framing on that the actual edges of the frames, front and back, will be pocket holes. So they'll be really strong, glued up in pocket holes. So let's just kind of continue on here. This looks great. So this is going to go over here like this. And with a little bit of luck, everything should be... I may have to manipulate that a little bit, but everything should go... The board should get clamped together flush. I mean, together and not with a gap. So that looks good. Okay, so I made the cuts on the bottom rails to get ready to uh, make the framing up for this. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to end up cutting this top part off and using three screws on the side of it, decorative, probably square drive screws. And I'm going to clamp it around the board that comes in from here. But uh, this, is what our, this is what we're dealing with so far. Two inch spacing from the bottom of the wheel to the top of the bottom edge of the gate so 
it's looking good and I'm not going to leave these everything square I think I'm going to have an entry point and exit point I'm going to rig up some stops on my on my router table in the wing of my table saw and I think I'm going to go in with a chamfer bit I think that would look really nice to kind of enter in chamfer and then come out I have a rough cut um, eight boards to 17 inches, some are bigger. Uh, that's rough cut. They need to be 16 and 3 quarter. I've jointed one side, and I'll put that against the table saw fence and cut the other side to have parallel sides. Be nice and true, and they'll serve as the supports for the casters and also the ends of the baby gate. So I'll go ahead and cut those now. So a real handy thing to have is a magnetic, uh, this is actually a base for a, like a dial indicator or something for a milling machine or a lathe, but it works great on this, a lot of holding power. So I'm just going to be able to make real accurate repeatable cuts, 16 and 3 quarters, I'll cut all of these. Okay, and if I had a zero clearance insert for my table saw, it would have mitigated some of this backside tear out. But uh, I used my crosscut sled for that, but I sacrificed it for the uh, the dado. That's okay. I'll make a new one someday. Now the only the next step is to glue the faces of these boards up uh, in in pairs. Uh, so let's do that. Okay, going with the initial plan of cutting the actual um, bracket support off where you'd normally put the bolts up through. I'm going to cut these off and I'm going to put three alternating holes uh, missing each other's screw on the back side because they will touch. So I'm just going to have to alternate and make sure I keep that straight in my head. But I have to get the gap right because I need to fill this with a spacer of some sort. Uh, 1.495 so how did I get that lucky? One and a half inch spacer will go here probably up about two inches to keep the two inch theme for top to bottom. All right, so keeping with the with the two inch theme of the bottom rail, I'm going to carry this up here like this for the spacer. I think that'll look nice. Like that. All right. So carrying on, for this next step, I have a chamfer bit in my router with stop blocks on each end. And I'm going to do an in and out. So I'm just going to start with a stop block, touch the wood up against the stop block, and then feed the board into the chamfer. Carry the chamfer down to the other stop block and pull it out of the chamfer. So I'll have a start and a stop. It'll be kind of a, a it'll be a go. It'll be kind of round and go into a chamfer, and then kind of come out uh, round. So we'll take a look at it. I don't really know the height I need yet, so we'll just do a couple tests and adjust as needed. All right, I'm not going to lie. I'm absolutely terrified about this glue up. <clears throat> I don't really know the proper procedure for this many um, flats to, to glue up. I'm just going to do the best I can with the amount of clamps I have. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then just go as fast as I possibly can. So uh, uh, cross your fingers. Here we go.
Okay, so what I'm going to do next is cut these, I'll cut this bracket off. Uh, I'm just going to use this angle grinder, and I'm going to try to make as clean a cut as I can across here. I'll probably have to shape it up. This thinnest blade I have is a diamond wheel, so I don't really know how it's going to work on this. But uh, let's try to do this, see what happens. One down, one to go. All right, so after the glue up, I've saved you the, uh, the hassle of having to watch that. It was just me running around like a maniac, trying to make use of what few clamps I had. Uh, everything re went really well. I had one slat that I was uh, fighting a twist on. Now, some kind of internal stresses in the wood caused the tongue to not be perfectly uh, 90 degrees to the sidewall of one of the slats. and. Uh, now there's, there's nothing I could do about it. I tried to get it, I tried to clamp this this way and get the slat to twist this way. Uh, but doing so was opening up this because I didn't have enough uh, high pressure clamps. And uh, ideally I would have taken two by fours and stacked them on their edges uh, after they were passed through the jointer uh, on both sides. I just don't have enough clamps. I'm going to I'm gonna have to get some more clamps if I'm going to do projects like this. But I may do. And uh, everything turned out really well. I don't I have a minimal twist to the gate. It's uh, but I, when I when I put the caps on everything, which is just the, the face boards all the way around, I uh, I'll make sure everything uh, stays really flat, and I think it'll take care of it. All right. So this is the uh, this is what the casters will look like. And uh, I know I'm low for this bottom screw. On the other side, the screws are opposite. So they won't, the screw heads won't meet and they'll go mainly through. It'll be piloted and it'll be far strong enough. This will just be a, I'll probably pilot this hole a little bit extra just to guard against any potential splitting. I don't foresee any. And uh, it'll be far strong enough for this baby. It's really, this fur is really light. There's not going to be a lot of force applied to it. And, uh, and with uh, six screws holding each caster, it's going to be plenty strong. All right, my next step is to rip this cover board for the bottom of the baby gate. I'll rip it to dimensions and then cross cut it to 38 and a half inches. Okay, so um, despite my best efforts, I ended up with a little bit of a, a little bit of a bow in the gate. It's not bad at all. So what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take these big pine. Um, right now they're like two and a half by twos, and uh, they both are warped and twisted. So I'm gonna pass them through the joiner and then the table saw, and I'll do that twice to get all four sides parallel. And then I'll use those and I'll clamp it against the gate before I put the uh, before I put the bottom cover on. Okay, after that, you can see nice flat faces uh, mating against each other. The, ba the baby gate will go in here, uh, and when I put the cover over the holes where the slats are, 
and I'll clamp this up and it'll just ensure that the gate stays true and straight. There's a little bit of a warp in it now, uh, nothing I can do about it. It's just the nature of that uh, wood. So when I clamp this up, uh, hopefully when I unclamp it, it, after I put the cap on, what I call them the calves, it's just a, the trim essentially, um, it'll, it'll be straight. All right, so now it's time to glue the actual uh, bottom on the baby gate. It's gonna go here like this. There's a bow in this board, so I'm gonna put the bow up so that way maybe it'll be easier to clamp. It won't really matter, it's gonna go right down. Um, the painter's tape is just a little insurance that I don't glue the, the braces to the baby gate. So that's on there to make the removal a little bit easier. And let's glue this on. I have to be mindful how soft this stuff is. Looks like I used this board <laughs> as a clamping support earlier and there's a little bit of a clamp mark on it. But you won't see it. I may fill it and sand it back off anyway. I probably will actually. Let's glue this on. I don't, uh, again, I don't have enough clamps to do what I'm trying to do. But uh, let's do it anyway. Okay, so to catch up on what I've done, glued the bottom cap on, and then I glued the top cap on in the same manner, and I've just used epoxy, as it was appliance epoxy paint, just white paint, Rust-Oleum. After I primed it, put the casters on, and the next thing we have to do is track the casters. And by what I mean by that, since this is gonna be a sliding baby gate, just got to pick a point in your shop or something that you can sight down. And keep in mind, this is only going to have to roll like 40 inches. So roll it up. Try to keep it straight up and down as possible. And then check again. Yeah, this is tracking just fine. I don't have to adjust that. So let me show you what I've done uh, for the supports against the wall. Okay, please forgive the shaky camera I just couldn't show you what I wanted to show you with it on the tripod so if you can picture this gate fully open this will slide from right to left this is where the support will be and I'm gonna have ultra high molecular weight tape at the contact points just for to make it slick and make it slide better this piece I'll show you this and I wanted to come up with some kind of elaborate closure mechanism a, a two action closure well this the client has you know requested one of these and that's perfectly fine it's a two action it has to be pulled back and lifted out and uh, no infant is going to be able to do that that's that's a quite of a strong spring so this will be fine and this will thread in nicely you know it's uh that's not a full quarter of an inch but it's a it'll go in i'll put it all the way in up to the to the bend so it'll be more than strong enough this piece is the same kind of thing except it'll guide it in, it'll kind of puck it in when we close it with that angle. Of course, this would be screwed to the wall uh, in, a, in a stud. So I hope this isn't too shaky, but anyway. There's where that will be. And uh, that, if you picture the door completely shut, the gate shut, this is gonna be on the other side of the opening, obviously. Same for the bottom puck. I have uh, another coat to do on this one. I filled in a little bit of a knot hole there. But the angle will help it just puck in real nicely in case, you know, it does walk out or something a little bit. It'll guide it right in. Of course, UHMW tape on all the pucking areas so it'll slide without marring anything. Let's go check out the other side. 
Okay, so for the fully open position, with the gate slid all the way to the right, same puck style system, it'll just guide it in and seat when the, when the gate is fully open. No need for a top support in this position because it, you know, there's not going to be anything hanging on it, uh, little hands or uh, anything pulling on it. So the only support back here will be this, and this is where this will be located fully open, if that makes any sense. All right, so that's the baby gate. Next thing to do is install it and, uh, you know, go from there.